and Bolt is free. So Bolt were not initially the Unity's product, but then Unity find it very useful and it just worked like a charm with their existing game engine. So that they so they purchased it. And you can see uh, how uh, multiple screen works. You can see uh, multiple features and then reviews and things like that, but we are not interested in that. So let's just open in Unity. So uh, what I can do, I have already downloaded it. If you hadn't, it must have must have been showing you the download button instead of import. But I have downloaded it, so I can press right away import, and it's showing you whatever it comes with. So import all. So now we have the whole package, and it will ask us some quiz questions. So let's say next, it will ask you human naming versus programmer naming. So <laughs> It sounds really funny, but human naming basically says it will not uh, craft the uh, the variables the way uh, a programmer does. Like if you write down like add force, it will not work in Unity. But if you write down add force such way, it will work for Unity. It's the same convention programmer use. Okay, so uh, in this, make sure you use this one. And there are two reasons for that. Uh, one reason is that you are going to uh, keep learning that uh, how programmers code. So you are leaning more and more towards programming or at least understanding the programming. And second reason to choose so because the uh, rest of the community is choosing the same option over and over. Okay, next. Okay, so we'll get all these sort of concepts like objects, what are objects, what are boolean ray cast and things like that. So all everything you need to require a game, uh, it's already there. For everything you, of course, there are ways to create your own uh, these sort of uh, behaviors. Now what we can do is basically we can, uh, if you are not already aware of Unity, let me just uh, guide you a little. Okay, so let me just give you a little bit of brief uh, like uh, this is the scene and for example like this is called hierarchy everything which is present in hierarchy will be useful for our scene let me just show you a little bit of uh, sense to what i'm talking about this is scene this is called game and game is basically whatever your camera sees is your game and they here are what is the aspect ratio you want to run? It's, it's going to be 4K, 1920 by 1080, whatever the, uh, you want to. And every window is dockable. So you can arrange the window in whatever the way you want to arrange. Okay, So that's how uh, you can basically use Unity for your uh, requirement. Uh, let me just create in hierarchy, right click, and create 3D object, and create one cube. Okay, so now if I have created a cube and click on camera and camera has this sort of white lines and you can, I don't know how visible it is, but these white lines are covering this cube. And since they are covering this cube, you can see the cube here. Here you can do uh, anything, but you can't touch it because we have not coded any input. So now let me just select cube. Uh, make it somewhere here. So you can see the cube here and the same cube here. And if I press W, it, it gives me some sort of arrows. I can move it up down and you can see the same change in this perspective in here. And this is always looking from the perspective of camera. If I move it closer, you can see uh, the object is getting closer or not. You can see yeah, like this. Okay, so this is how object works. You can uh, do basically three fundamental things to any object, which are these scale. Uh, these are scale, like I can raise the scale of object. Uh, let's make it five here. So you can see it's raised to five. Previously it was just one. So you can change the scale of objects. You can rotate the objects in whatever the way you want. Okay, X axis or Y axis or Z axis. Uh, in whatever the way you want to scale, uh, rotate, you can give them values and it will rotate. Uh, you can also uh, 
set their end position. So wherever you want to set them, you can uh, simply set them. Okay. So these are fundamental properties which are related to this object. To render any object, you know, you guys are artists, you already know what render means. To render any object, you need to make sure you, it has two components. One is mesh. Mesh is basically uh, the very FTX or the very vertices of vertices the data of what the object is need to be uh, rendered on the screen. That is contained in mesh, and you cannot do much with mesh because there are not many options. And the other one is mesh render, and this basically manages how these data, which is the cube mesh, is going to be visible on the screen. Uh, there are several properties in the mesh render, but the most, most important one is this, uh, which is called uh, material. So let me just add, show you how material works. So let me create a whole data material and name it M0. Okay, let me save my scene. Okay, this M0, I can change any color. I can, uh, let's say, yellow, some something yellow. Okay, and I can drag it here or I can assign this into the element section. And now this cube is uh, yellow. Okay. So that's how this, you basically give properties to your cube. This is box collider. This is responsible for all the physics. There is one more component which is responsible for the physics and it's called rigid body. Okay. So let's turn off gravity for now, otherwise it will fall. So let me give you a simple demo. Okay. Let me turn on. And what will happen? Uh, nothing will happen because uh, I have not, I'm not giving any command, but it, this is physics operatable. So all the physics are applying, being applied to this loop and I can add uh, gravity, start using gravity. And once I do it, it the cube falls because now it's using gravity. Otherwise it won't, okay. I can add forces to an object only if it has some sort of rigid body and colliders, all right? So I hope this and uh, these are assets here. You put all your code and all your folders, and you have to uh, arrange your code folder in a good manner, like material and things like that, and put it in here. Okay. So in this folder, you keep all your stuff. So okay. So let me uh, write some sort of script, and then I'll do the same thing with a uh, void script. Okay. Let me call it script. And I'm going to create C sharp and I'm going to create a script called rotate. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to add this script here and So usually it opens in this sort of script editor. I'm not going to scale you guys, but it's just, uh, you guys might be already familiar with this, but this is the traditional way of coding. Then I'll show you uh, the modern way of coding. Okay. Public, right now, public vector three, let's say vector three, and let's call it rotation. All right, so I'll receive some sort of rotation from outside and I'll assign it to uh, my material. So let's say uh, my object transform dot, uh, there's a function called rotate. Okay, so transform dot rotate and pass the rotation. So this rotation is the same rotation which I'm receiving from outside. All right, uh, and that is it. So one, just one question, one, this update is saying that update is called once per frame. Okay. Uh, in when I talk about rendering, when I talk about uh, computer graphics, the very fundamental things to computer graphics is that uh, the idea of objects, the object is a 3D thing, does not exist. Uh, object does not exist in uh, 3D space, okay, uh, physical 3D space. But they, uh, if suppose I'm moving this cube. Uh, the compiler, the rendering has to be more than 60 times or roughly 60 times a minute uh, to be able to show that this thing is moving. Okay? If I don't do that, if I don't render, it will not move. Okay? It will not at least look moving. So let me just run this code. 
I've hardly added any code. Okay, so when I will run this, something will happen, and that something is nothing. Okay, nothing is happening, and the reason is I have not provided any value. So it is rotating, but it has no inputs for rotation. So let me add some input, and it started rotating. Okay, I have added input in y. Let me add some input in x as well. So you can see a weird sort of rotation. Uh, some input in z as well. Okay, a very big input. Uh, a smaller input maybe. Okay, so now that this cube has life. It, it is uh, showing how to uh, move, how to dance basically. Okay, so and it's doing just that but by just one single line and that is transformed to a rotate. Let me try to give you some sort of understanding that how this line works. So when we add this value, let's add some simpler value like five, right? Why it's behaving? Okay, one second. Let me add some simple value like. So I can pause the simulation. I can play the simulation. But once I do use this button, this will move the simulation frame by frame. So when I press this button once, the simulation will be played one step ahead only. Okay. If I press one, what happened? This number changed. This number changed. I press number this. Uh, I press this button again. Okay. This changed to 160. Press again. 165, press again, 170, press again, 175, and so on. It's continuously changing by five degree. And why it's continuously changing by five degree? Because I'm saying so. So whatever the input is coming, and the input is in Y direction five degree. So change in each frame, this update literally means change in this each frame by five degree, or whatever the degree that you want to change. Let's put some weird number and it the, the, it will get some uh, same amount of factor. I put it 23. It's going to be changed by 23 in the X now. Okay. And when I play it in fast mode, here you can see how rapidly these numbers are changing because this computation is literally having uh, 60 times of frame or something. Okay. If you can see here, it is happening uh, 70, 90, approximately 90. Okay. So that's how uh, graphic basically works. That's how a single frame is basically being prepared to be rendered and finally being rendered. All right. So let me come uh, do the same thing with the help of bold scripting. Uh, I'm going to remove this rotate script. And I'm going to add a different uh, component here. Okay. So what I want to add, I definitely want to add the help of bold. So I'm going to add bold. And there is a section called void. If you have added the package the right way, which you probably so it will show you the bold. Oh, hold on, I came into audio. It's, it's showing the bold, and it has several options. It has variables, state machine, flow machine. I'm most interested in flow machine here. Okay, so I added a flow machine. It is saying macro. It is a very important thing. It's saying macro. So the very environment on which all the visual scripting happens, the very stage is known as macro. So I'm going to create one macro and I'm going to create uh, by the name of, let's create it, uh, create a folder called macros, let me see ROS, all right. Go inside macros and create here, uh, rotate macro, rotate uh, macro. All right, here I can also explain that what this rotate macro does. I can name it, give it a title, which is, I, I may or may not, this is completely optional, but it is a good practice to at least give uh, this title. Okay, macro, all right. I can give a summary uh, like this. Will spin, okay, whatever you want. All right, now, once you've done that, you can create convert and it will create the uh, the very source embedded and and you have sorry uh, you can create this once and it is now created now you can click on edit graph here is the button once you find it there is a button called edit graph and it will create a flow chart okay 
you can tag your flow chart any way you want suppose here okay and here you got the same events so what you had in unity when you start you had two functions update and start by default here is the same thing update and start what does update tell me update tell me that now my app, uh, application is going to click one picture okay update is basically telling me that now i'm going to click one photograph so please make sure that your all your objects are in the very correct position like a cameraman tells you that okay i'm going to take a photo make sure your tummy is in okay it's the same way update is basically letting us know that i'm going to create click a picture so whatever the changes you want to do is make sure you do otherwise i'm not responsible okay and the start is telling us that i'm going to start now okay it calls only when press the submission started and if update calls whenever at each frame all right so the same concept okay and now you need to understand some basic things that it has this is called flow okay this uh, line is called flow and flow is a very fundamental concept uh, okay How, once you suppose create this line by left clicking if you want to if you uh, stop it it will give you some sort of conditions but i'm not going to go under that so uh, and if you want uh, now it has logged your mouse you can literally go anywhere with that all right anywhere uh, how you want to rescue yourself uh, so just do a right click and it will uh, stop following you and uh, how you go back so suppose you are you lost your screen you don't know where you are just do this this and it will show you that where is the, where you have lost and make it make this again now it is in center make it in center and scroll and zoom now you are at the right position all right so by this you can go any way you want by scrolling okay scrolling at the correct uh, position this is very important now i'm going to create something i'm going to create i i need to rotate right let's say rotate i type rotate here it's searching for all kind of rotates there are like 100 kind of rotates and it's uh, asking me which rotate to call i need to call transform dot rotate and there are multiple conditions that how in what variant this rotate comes i'll pick a very simple rotate variant which comes with three angles like three euler angles okay so this is a rotate function which comes with three euler angles So okay, so let's put some value. Uh, like previously, we put some value of five there. Let me put some value of five here. All right, and let's try to run this. Okay, so I have not made any other change. I'm going to run this. When I run this, of course, it will compile because now a person is not named the compiler, and you can see the flow is happening. you can see literally a lot of balls going from here to there which means it's showing you the flow okay it's the same thing previously as you imagine and right now uh, the the frame rate which we are getting it's much more all right which means it's or uh, even from the uh, perspective of uh, scripting or or uh, complexity it's not that much if i do two screen run the frame rate will drop because rendering is the most uh, hyper thing which takes so it's rendering two objects two screens from the perspective of two cameras so it's why frame rate is down if i render on, only one the frame rate will increase rapidly so right now frame rate has increased okay so this is a fundamental concept we'll you'll we'll learn about frame rates and everyone everything eventually okay so that's how you rotate things uh let me add some weird rotation like we added earlier so you can see the weird rotation is happening and it is rotating in that way all right how to take how you going to take some sort of input in this condition okay it's already three i'll have to wrap up fast so i'm going to tell you about inputs now okay uh let's add some input okay so let's uh say right click there and start adding let's say jump i want to add input called jump so uh, let me try jump if jump doesn't work 
okay there are some jumps configuration joints i don't want that that sort of jump suppose i want uh, add force okay and there is a force called rigid body add force and force mode all right so there are a uh, few sort of force mode velocity change impulse so let's choose impulse all right and we need to add the force so i'm going to add some sort of force here so let's see how i'm going to add a force i have added force where i want to add it let's say i want to add in the y direction and this is a position kind of thing so when you add it it will make change in the position only there is something called angular velocity which will make change in rotation only but this will make change in position only right so if i am suppose adding 5 it will make change in position only if i'll make change in suppose uh, this it will throw from the angle 5 in y and uh, 10 in um, z so let's add this sort of weird sort of force 5 in y 10 in z okay and let's add okay let's add input uh, let's add a input called t down t down okay we got input dot get key down okay this is a very useful one uh, we got key down all right uh, and which key we want to take input of let's say here here you will select the key there is none and you you, you will get all the keys which you are there on your keyboard so you can select uh, let's say space i i want to on the press of space because that is uh, what everybody does i want to do something all right so we, i can select space but right. on the press of space i need to do something okay this thing is called output this thing is called input all right there are two component there is one triangle and there is one as uh, circle so the circle is input and output and the triangle is flow how flow works we'll understand right away and flow is a very important concept of any programming language all right so let's feed in if i if i try to connect this If it's not happening it's not happening if you will collect even this it's suggesting that you should use a branch okay now let's see what is a branch let's say i want to use a branch all right uh, sorry yeah like this so it says you can connect but if you only if you can use a branch so okay all right i want to use a branch so now branch is basically a deciding factor if you are getting this input you will get two options if input is there if input is not there if input is there it's going to be uh, this uh, true if input is not there it's going to be false okay all right you got it so you have to make sure that you want to do things when the input is there or not all right so how are you going to do it uh, let's say if i want to do it when input is not there all right if i uh, if i want to remove this i can do a right click and it will i notate as red and i can uh, stop pressing the right uh, right mouse key and it will disappear so that's how you link and that's how you unlink left click link right click unlink all right so i want to connect it with true so this connects with this all right this connects with this okay makes sense so whenever the flow is true the flow will go to here if the flow is false it will stop it here it will not go anywhere if you want let's say uh, if flow is not here go some somewhere else so you can here create some more things to do it's like if else condition uh, if you do programming you know if else uh, it's the same thing branch is the same thing here all right so that's how you create a branch uh, okay so now input is there and i want to do something so i and i have added what i want to do so first make sure uh, do you want to have the rigid body rigid body is already there because we added that all right uh, rigid body is there and that is not using uh, okay so let's see what happens uh, let's see what happens when we run it so now i want to run it what happens okay this is running this is running this is running now what is happening if i press space bar what is happening nothing is happening why nothing is happening because i have not tell my computer that what when to do it okay 
I have added that preset on this particular functionality whenever the sp uh, space is there, but this is not connected to the program. This is my update function. What I can do, I can pass this flow to here also. You can see some more balls are going to there, like water flowing to there as well. Now this flow is on, right? And now let's see what will happen when I will press our space bar. Okay, one, two, three. All right, I'm pressing space bar and nothing is happening. Why nothing is happening? Okay, it says key, key is added in, key space, that is called key space, and then, okay, okay, I got it. Okay, so you, you have to do, make sure, one second, then we lost it, so we can go back and we can go forward. We can also press control to control zoom, okay? Connect the flow this way. Okay, but also there's a gap. You are passing the input, whatever the input is there, you are passing, but you are not passing the flow. So flow passing is also important. So now everything is lit up. If the flow is disconnected, you know that this function is not going to be called. It's like it's like the light is off for this. It's not highlighted. Whenever you will pass the flow, now this function is into consideration. You know the code flow can reach you. Now let's do the same thing. Also, one thing to make this appear good. One second. Huh? Just, just one second. Okay, go to camera. Uh, you can see better with the solid color. So let me pick some sort of uh, this sort of solid color. Let's say, all right. Some solid color, any sort, yeah, some something dark like this. Okay, this looks good. All right, so now let's run this. And now you can see the flow is complete, everything is complete. Now let's see what happens if I press it. I press the space bar, and what happened? It flew away. All right, now we can, if I press it again, it flew away faster. Okay, uh, if I don't press, uh, the space, you can see it's not uh, this particular, whenever I press space, this will lit up. So I press space, you can see the rigid body is getting lit up whenever I'm pressing space. Okay, now press space. So that's how code, uh, code flow follows. The code flow will not go here unless the uh, space, you don't press space. And on the true, the, 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 the code will lit up. All right, so you can branch uh, different, different uh, modules as well. Okay, let's try a different sort of uh, module uh, where it only rotates when I press some key. Okay, you, you understood the input, how input works. And let's uh, try to uh, do the same thing. So uh, I'll, I'll delete this. I don't require this. So right click and delete. Okay, and this, uh, I'll, I'll have to remove this connection. So right click and remove connection, right click, remove connection. I put it there and let's say, whenever I press this, uh, this this function will lift up. Okay. I literally changed uh, the, the very condition, the way how it works without changing any line of code or anything and everything is changed now, all right? You'll see how, the, how this happens. So I, I have added key down, but I can change it to uh, let's say I don't want key down. I, I, I remove this as well. So this as well, this as well. I add one more uh, unit. So if I add get key, get key, dot key down, this time I'm getting get key. Okay, then there's a difference. I'll, you'll understand the difference. I'll show you how you, you will understand the difference. All right, so let's connect it here. Let's connect it here. Flow is there, but the input is not going there. So I'll connect the input as well. Now everything is there, right? The flow is there, the input is there, everything is there. Now let's run it. Let's see what will happen. So, and the answer is uh, you all know what will happen. Nothing will happen, right? Why nothing will happen? Because the flow will reach here only when I'll press uh, the uh, space button. 
So let's press space button. Click here. Press the space button. Okay, sorry. The key again goes back to Pentel uh, for some reason. Okay. I press the space, it start turning. I stop pressing, it stop turning. Press the space, the, the rotation turned up and I can also do reverse at runtime. You can't do this with the code. I can, uh, how, how we can do it? I remove this. I can draw here from here. Now it will running, now it is running whenever the space is not pressed. When I press the space, it will stop, okay? I, I stop pressing space, it's running. I press the space, it's stop. So that's how you craft basic logic uh, with uh, Bolt, all right? Or any visual scripting tool. This uh, tutorial is not just for uh, Bolt, it's for any visual scripting tool because uh, the conditions and the, and the things, uh, the, the, the very mechanics is same across, it's same in all sort of programming languages. Okay, so let's remove this. Uh, I want to make it happen only when the code, when I press it, it's, it's happening only when I press it. If I want to change the functionality, it happens only when I don't press it. It's already happening, rotation is already happening. I can break whenever I press uh, this function, all right? So I hope you understood some of the basics of uh, code. I don't have much time now, uh, so I'll wrap it up pretty quick. If you have any questions, I can give you like five, 10 minutes. Uh, it was a very great session. And uh, guys, you can unmute yourself and you uh, feel free to ask your questions. We have another three more minutes to, another, sorry, another 12 minutes to complete the session. So feel free to ask your questions. So what is the ball scripting usage in the industry, uh, Avi? What is the... Uh -huh. What is the it's mostly, the mostly used in rapid prototyping. Uh, usually it's not, uh, I won't say it is uh, very uh, heavily being adopted in the industry. Uh, people still prefer scripting, but it's changing day by day. Uh, it will take some more time to be completely a no code thing. And especially to for, for programmers to adopt it, uh, but but people are changing their minds. Uh, even one year back, I never used to code on no code tool. I never used a no code tool. But once I used Facebook Spark, Facebook Spark was a wonderful program. And when I used it, I realized how powerful the no code technology is. You the literally the fundamental concepts are very same to what you do with the programs, and it really doesn't matter that you are writing code or you are doing it visually. It really does not really matter. The algorithm process, the way how you think remains the same. But again, the industry will take like five to six years to adopt it uh, for, for like commercial projects. But right now it's used for prototyping for sure. Oh, that's a great input. And uh, talking about the designers, those are game designers. So we are looking forward and motivating them only to motivate them only. I think this concept came into many of the game engines. So what is the problems do you think they face uh, during using this like kind of on a general uh, for all the beginners? What kind of a problem they face? Uh, the only problem I would say uh, there is, is the mindset. Uh, because everything you require to start with scripting or start with any sort of game development is already there. Uh, the technology which you are using in today's time uh, was used to cost like millions of dollars. If I uh, talk about early 2000, the same sort of tools uh, like Unreal used to cost millions of dollars. The, the license used to cost this much. Uh, but now the technology is available literally for free. You can use them, you can start building things. The only thing is stopping us right now is the mindset that it's going to be complex. It's, it is literally not complex. Uh, you can start doing it and you'll learn, you'll fail, you'll learn. And there are so many tutorials, there are so many people creating their beautiful, wonderful channels like you uh, have and or like I, we, I have uh, on, on XRDI. So these sort of people are creating uh, the way easier for new generation. And, and it's becoming easier and easier. Previously used to have 
a lot of documents, a lot of um, uh, support uh, for communities. And now it's everything is just on another level. So starting, getting started is getting easier and easier day by day. Only thing which I think is problematic is the mindset that you feel that it's, uh, it's hard. But once you start doing it, you find it easy. Uh, that is a really great input, uh, we again. Uh, talking about the complete structure development, talking about from the basic till the advanced level, which you demonstrated is good that many people come now come to know how to use Visual Script Team. So what is your thought process in developing a complete AR application or a game development or whatever it is using the Visual Script Team? What do you think really there is a gap between a programming using a development using complete programming and using completely using visual scripting what is the difference between that? major differences right now uh, i would say okay uh, so the, the only uh, i would say the problem you could face is the completeness all right so unity and bolt on their end has already created uh, all the modules which are like most commonly used and they are like 80% of the modules. But when it comes to third party APIs, when it comes to something which Unity is not really taking responsibility for, uh, then uh, they are like third party softwares for Unity. So then you, uh, Unity and Bold cannot do nothing about those softwares. And you literally have to uh, look for support. Uh, however, on the code, you can uh, do it whatever the way. And they are literally the very exceptions. And you, uh, the bold, uh, the good thing about the bold is it provide you the very feature or the very compatibility of scalable coding. It provides you uh, the, the very idea or the very, uh, I would say, liberty to uh, whenever you want, you can switch to um, normal standard programming or code with code programming whenever you want. Whenever you came across a third party software, you can, uh, because it supports the bold script as well as uh, the normal script at the same time. So whatever you create, they are mutually compatible. So I won't say you'll face any good problem or in most of the cases, in like 80, 90% of the cases, they are not going to be any problem. But yeah, then in the third party softwares or the third party APIs or something which is very new, like very latest update or something, some some experimental data technology, then you could face some sort of uh, uh, struggle. Avi, in your in your uh, development life, uh, what uh, while have you used anywhere this visual scripting for the entire development, and what are the problems you personally, as a developer, you faced it? on your product development or uh, application development, any kind of an application or product. Okay, so I'm a hardcore programmer and I literally use uh, the ways uh, Unity has never used before in the world. So I literally push Unity to the limit sometime. Uh, so for me, visual scripting is really not the thing, but it's really good for people to uh, who want to do rapid prototyping for you who are like designers and they are starting with programming or uh, the future programmers because the future programmers are definitely uh, going to adapt it. So for them, it's definitely there. However, not in Unity, but in, in like Spark AR, which is also a visual scripting, uh, they have the visual scripting backend. So there I have did several filters using uh, these sort of visual scripting. So, uh, and then that is very convenient. And that is where I found that how cool this visual scripting could be. So of course, uh, you can you can find your own way and you can start somewhere and, and, and keep hopping on one technology to others. And that's how everybody learns. Uh, I think that's uh, that's a good lead, uh, actually, which you gave for the upcoming session, which we can expect from you on the Spark AR with uh, well, visual scripting. <laughs> it's really we're going to do some session on Spark AR as well. Uh, I yeah, did but, a one in past, uh, but I'll definitely do more experiments yeah, on definitely. that. Uh, looking forward for you, uh, we will be, let's collaborate and let's do it with uh, IMSK with upcoming session on Spark AR with visual scripting. I think many of the, during the session, I think a lot of people were chatting with me that they were asking for an AR VR developer with the easiest, easy method with the, because there are a lot of uh, designers who are very, having a lot of interest and a lot of concepts in developing a lot of 
con in games or an application but they are scared about programming so i think the visual scripting or uh, in unreal we have blueprint which is opening the doors for the designers to come out with a proper completed product which they can happy to see whatever they have in the mind now they can see as a complete product i think that uh, even you agree about that you have anything on to say on that no of course uh, the unity uh, unity is bold and uh, unreal's blueprint these are very powerful uh, uh, methods of creating uh, whatever you want to you whatever you have imagine whatever your dreams are so suppose if you are lacking any problem regarding code or anything uh, you can connect to anyone in our community as well uh, because not everybody knows everything and i'm sure whenever i'll get stuck with graphics or whenever i'll get get stuck with some model polycount or something i'll get back to your designers uh, that's how communities collaborate and and make use of each other's superpowers so definitely you do collab and do learn with these sort of engine whatever the help is required i'll definitely be there for you all uh that's a, i think that's a really wonderful information which you told just now i think there are a lot of newcomers here and a lot of uh, people who are interesting interested uh, students are here those who are interested to jump into uh, game designing or development i think now i think imsk and xrd and lot of other uh, community is there to help you all to come inside the gaming community and which is with all your support i think let's make our country proud and let's bring this community and sectors in a way up in the in global market with all your support and really happy and uh, thank you on behalf of all the participants and on behalf of imsk um thanking avidivedi uh, really thank you really thank you for a wonderful session and uh, to all the participants we are looking forward for a lot of interesting sessions are coming up in imsk and uh, which is a very like we are looking forward we are picking up the sessions based on the current scenarios and current issues and current problems which we help lot of designers and lot of developers we try to do the best as possible and uh, i think we have lot of pioneers and uh, like avi and lot of other pioneers are there with us in our various communities to help you all looking forward to collaborate and work together thank you and thank you one and all to join on today's webinar series of imsk thank you thanking and thank you for joining for today's session thank you ajay thank you very much don't miss to keep us following up in our discord channel and telegram channel and if anyone wants to see the recordings shortly you will be seeing it in the youtube channels and you can able to see that youtube channel link in our discord channel shortly in the webinar talks channel area thank you thank you all Thank you.